Now, when it comes to Gutenberg, dynamic data isn't something that's heavily integrated into the whole process. Yesterday, I released a video on my five favorite add-ons for Gutenberg, and each one of those opens up more options to integrate dynamic tools into your designs, tools like advanced custom fields, those kinds of things. Well, today, we're going to expand upon the first option that I covered in there, generate blocks, and take a look at the forthcoming 1.5 release and what that brings with it. The nice thing is though, this 1.5 alpha release is for the free version of Generate Blocks. So this is really exciting to see these new tools being added in, but also knowing that we're gonna have more when the pro version is released. So what exactly do we have? Well, first of all, we now add to the four original block level elements, our containers, grids, headings, and buttons, and we add in an image element. Now I know that doesn't sound particularly exciting, and in the general grand scheme of things, it probably isn't. But what they're doing over at Generate Press is making sure these integrate well, they're solid, and they do the things that we need without adding tons and tons of bells and whistles that most users will never have a need for. So let's take a look at how this all works. And I can show you the Generate Press way of doing things and how this differs from what you may be used to. So I've gone ahead and set up a blank page inside Gutenberg. We're now ready to take a look at the different new elements, the new features, the new options, those kinds of things that will be included. Now, first of all, before we do take a look at this, you are free to download this. The link will be in the description along with the information about the change log and all the new features. But please don't use this on a production site. This is an alpha build, which basically means this is pre beta or beta. And there are going to be issues in it. Already start to see those highlighted as this open alpha is available. So only use this on a test environment to play about with it to get a feel for what's coming. With that being said, let's take a look. So if we now open up the option on the left hand side, you can see we now have a couple more options inside here. We've got the query loop and we also have the image. Two new options. So first of all, let's go ahead and add in the query loop. First, we'll just put a container inside this. We can contain everything. And then inside there, we'll go ahead and add our query loop. So let's just search for that. Let's go ahead, use the query loop. And now you can see we've got an option for three different kind of pre-designed starting points. For this example, let's go ahead and use the two column option. You can see that now pulls in the basic information, the title, some basic meta information, and the excerpt content. No images, nothing like that at all. But what we can do now is we can completely control and design how these are going to look. We simply make an edit to the first one, and any changes you make in there will reflect on every single example where this card is being used. It's a really simple, clean and quick way of doing things. So we'll leave the basics as they are, but let's go ahead and add the featured image in to see, first of all, the featured image, the new block level element, but also how we can reference the dynamic data because it is a little different to what you may be used to. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna open up the panel on the left-hand side, come underneath our post date, and you can see we can now go ahead and add anything we want in there. So let's just go ahead and add a plus. We'll say we want to include the image. Now you can see this as the upload, media library, or insert from URL. However, we can basically ignore that completely. If we look on the right hand side underneath the block panel, you can see we have a new entry inside here called dynamic data. If we enable dynamic data, you can see we now have three different options we can start to use to reference what we're gonna pull in on all those kinds of things, all the settings that go with it. So you can see the data source, current post, we can choose from current post or post type. So you can use these on archive pages. You can use this with custom post types. Anywhere you can create a card, you can basically use this functionality to create the design for it. Okay, so we leave this set to be current post, that's perfectly fine. Data type, you can see we can choose from featured image, post meta, author avatar. And again, if we were using dynamic fields, custom meta fields with images and so on, we could reference that inside here as well. We're going to choose the featured image, and you can see then we can set this up to be linked if we want to. If we leave the link type as nothing, then these are not linked images. They're just basically an image. However, we can change that, and we can set that to go to any of lots of different places. So you can see single post, single image, author archives, comment area, post meta, previous post, next posts. You can use lots of different options for how you link this. Obviously, this would be used on an archive page in this example. So all we need to do is choose single post, and that will then link that to the post using whatever template or the default template that you're using with your theme. Now, there's one thing I would like to see inside here, because if no image is used for the featured image, then we're going to have either close up with nothing at all in there or a blank space. I'd like to see the option for a fallback image, just so we can put a placeholder in there, just to make sure our design kind of stays together. But other than that, it's all pretty simple. Now, because you're using the new generate blocks image block, 
we now have more control over what we would have had if we just simply used the standard Gutenberg block. So now we can see we've got all the normal options we'd have as part of generate blocks. We can come into our settings, we can choose the size of the image. So in this example, large might be perfectly fine. Just to cut down the size of the image, we don't want full. You can set custom width height. You can choose the object fit, lots of different options inside there. You can come in, choose your spacing. So for this example, we obviously want to add a bit of space at the bottom. So we can just come in, go to our margins or our padding, whichever we want to use. Let's just use our padding for this example and set 30 pixels in there. And you can see now when we make a change there, that's been reflected in each one of these cards. So we're effectively editing one and that then filters down through everything. Really simple. You don't have to do this more than one time. So now that we've done the spacing for our image, we can take a look then at editing any of the other options inside here. So for example, let's just say we come down and choose the option for our text. Now we can go ahead and we can customize all of this. Let's say, for example, you want to change the typography, you want to change the tag. We can set this to paragraph, for example. We can come to our spacing. We can adjust our spacing inside this. So let's say we want to put a bit more spacing around this to take it away from the edges, where we can easily do that. We can just pop into our padding, for example. We can link those together and say, let's put 40 inside there, just to give us a little bit more breathing space. And again, you see everything picks that data up. If we come down, we can open up our colors, and you'll notice that this is now slightly different. If we open this background color, for example, the text color, open that up, you'll notice this is slightly different to the current live version. That's because another new feature has been added in when they've started working on this new build and the new features is to replace the standard WordPress Gutenberg color picker and use their own custom coded one. So we can see we've got all the options for our colors. We'll have transparency in various different places where it's relevant and so on. So very, very cool to see we have that. The other thing that's been included in this new interface is that it remembers the tab uh, sort of condition. So in other words, if you had a particular tab open, when you go back to that widget, that tab will still be open. Just speeds up when you're working with an interface like this, where Gutenberg isn't necessarily the nicest place to work anyway but anything we can do to have a much more simple, streamlined, and quicker to work with interface, it's a good thing. And Generate Blocks is definitely making headway towards making it a more usable place for us. Okay, so you can see we can now go ahead, change the colors if you want to inside there. So we can say we want to change that to this bluish kind of teal color. And we've also got the dynamic data option. So you can see we can choose to have this used in the excerpt, or we can come in and we can choose any of the other options we want. So because it's just a normal dynamic heading field, we can use any kind of data inside here. We can change the excerpt length. Let's say we want to set that to 30 words, for example, and we want to get rid of this read more button, and we're going to set this up to be using the custom button, which we can also now link up with dynamic data. So let's just do that. Let's go ahead and add our button in. So we'll click to add our button. We'll do a search. There's our buttons, we'll select that from there. We can go ahead and position this and put our spacing and margins and so on around this. So let's just do that. Let's, and on the left-hand side, we're gonna set 30 inside there, actually 40. And we'll set 40 at the bottom to give us breathing space. And again, you can see this picks everything up. Now we can click inside here and we can change the text to, for example, read more. And again, all the buttons pick that up. But what we can also do is we can use dynamic data inside there as well. So you can see we can enable dynamic data, leave the source set to current post, but again, the options are inside there for current post or post type depend upon what kind of design and what kind of part of your site you're working on. Data type, you can see we can choose title, excerpt, post meta, list of terms, and so on. It's just treated like normal dynamic data. So you can say you want to grab the post title, and you can see now that replaces the button text with the post title text. Really simple to do. And if you want to get rid of that, you can just remove that and say select. And then you can simply come back in and just say read more. Set your data source. You can see that's one side there. We can also set our link type. So we'll say we want to link this to the single post. And now we've set this up so the image is clickable to take us to the single post. The button is clickable to take us to the single post using dynamic data inside all these different options. And again, we still have full control. If you want to add more dynamic data in, you can do all of that inside here as well. Really simple to start working with. So you can see this is incredibly simple to start working with. We now have a lot more control over the dynamic data that's being pulled in. We have extra block level elements to give us more control. We have a nicer, simpler interface to work with. 
lots of really great options. But all of this, like I say, is in the free version of the generate blocks so it's exciting to see what's going to come with the pro version and what extra dynamic tools and features hopefully will be included in there to give us even more control over things now that's basically just a first look at some of the new features in this alpha build of generate blocks free as always i would welcome your feedback on this and all applicable links are in the description below as always my name is paul c this is wp tats and until next time take care